Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Antonella Goes Hunting. For today, we're going to be making suki and veal saltimbocca. Now, suki is basically a Roman version of what you would know as the arancini, which is the rice ball that the Sicilians make. But suki was made more in Rome, and the word itself comes from a French word meaning surprise. And the surprise, of course, is a soft mozzarella centre. So join me today and we're going to make suki with veal saltimbocca. To start with, the suki are made with basically leftover risotto. But I don't have any leftover and I wanted to show you how to make just a basic version because the last one I showed you was quite complex with all the ingredients I used from leftovers. For our prep, we're going to slice up an onion, but we're going to dice it very fine. We don't want it to be too big and chunky in our soupy. And we're also going to chop up some garlic. You can mix this if that's preferable for you if you can't seem to get it fine enough. And then chop up the garlic. Put a saucepan on a low heat and add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and allow that to heat up. Add your garlic and your onion. Gently give them a stir to make sure that they don't burn. Then add one cup of tomato. mils of my chicken stock made from my broth from my last risotto recipe. Cover the rice with the stock. Now make sure that that is definitely on a low setting. Allow it to come to heat and then add a bit more stock as it starts to reduce. I'm just going to grate a little bit of parmesan cheese just for a little bit of extra added flavour. If you find that the risotto starts to get quite thick and the rice itself hasn't finished cooking yet and you're all out of stock, you can add water to finish the cooking process. When the risotto has finished cooking, and you can tell because if you taste the rice, it's nice and soft to taste, and the liquid has reduced quite a bit. You don't want it to be too thick, but you also don't want it to be too watery, otherwise they won't hold together. We're going to slice up the mozzarella sticks that we're going to fill up the centre with. We want them to be approximately one centimetre's width, about that kind of a size. So you've got one centimetre width and just smaller than a finger length because by the time that you've got the tsukli surrounding it, you don't want this to ooze out the sides. You want it to stay within the tsukli. When you're ready to finish making your tsukli, what we're going to do is have a bowl ready to go with breadcrumbs. That's normally about a cup and a half of breadcrumbs in there. And I'm going to crack two eggs into another bowl. To make the tsukli, we have our cold risotto. We're going to grab some in your hand, grab a piece of the mozzarella, and then roll it up so that the risotto covers the mozzarella. Now, if you find that this gets a little bit sticky on your hands, keep your hands slightly moist. So once you have a nice kind of oval shape, which is the perfect shape for the tsukli, almost like an egg, put this into your egg mix, give it a quick roll around, and then put that into your breadcrumbs, and voila, your tsukli is ready to cook. We're going to quickly shallow fry the tsukli. You will need quite a bit of olive oil in the bottom of this. I'm going to add a touch of sunflower oil to this. And I'm gonna prepare a plate to put these on with a bit of paper towel on top so that once they're fried, they'll soak up the rest of the oil when I pull them out. The oil needs to be quite hot. If you don't put them in when the oil is very hot, 
what's going to end up happening is the tsukli will actually fall apart. So one by one, very gently, try to keep the shape of the tsukli, place them into the frying pan. You can prepare these ahead of schedule if you like and keep them in the fridge until you're ready to fry. When the tsukli look a beautiful golden brown like this, and they're covered on all sides by nice frying. Pull it out of the pan and leave it on some paper towel to cool down slightly. Veal saltimbolka. Literally, veal jumps in your mouth. So for this dish, I've got here some veal sizzle steak, or otherwise known as sizzle steak, but without breadcrumbs on it. And we're going to cover it with an inch of the slice. Gonna tenderize the meat and flatten it out as much as possible. Now, one way of doing that is we have to be able to roll up the butcher and the sage and the veal all together. However, I find that sometimes putting a little roll up on a plate, people kind of look at it and go, oh, that's not enough. We are going to chop them in half, have slices of prosciutto. fresh sage leaves from my garden. So we want one per steak. Then we put the sage leaves down on top of the veal and then the prosciutto goes on top of that. Then with a toothpick, we're going to hold the whole thing together. Turn these over and salt and pepper the back of the steaks. We're going to shallow fry these for one minute on each side. Into a frying pan, we're going to drizzle some olive oil. Right now it's on a medium heat. And one by one, we're going to place the steaks with the prosciutto side down first into the pan. I really wish you had smell a vision to smell what I can smell here. It is amazing. After one minute, flip them over and see that lovely roasted section right there of the shukto, that's beautiful. As these finish cooking, I'm going to place them onto a serving platter and then into the frying pan is about 20 grams of butter. Look at the amalgamate with the juices of the meal. I'm adding a tablespoon of pepperberry, a squeeze of about say half of a lemon, salt, pepper, a touch of your favourite dry white wine. If it's reduced slightly, it will give you a beautiful lemon burnt butter sauce. Turn off the heat and drizzle this over your veal salting borka. Tsukki and veal salting borka ready to go. My favourite part of the tsukki is actually when we were children. We used to get it and when you split it apart and the cheese was this melty. It was like a telephone wire. Hello, hello. Pronto, pronto, que parla. I can't do that anymore. Kids nowadays wouldn't know what a telephone wire was. But anyway, it brings back the good memories. Buon appetito. <laughs> you just have to make your own. I hope you enjoyed Antonella Ghost Hunting. Join me again next week for another episode. In the meantime, let me know what you would like me to make. These came to you from request of Maria. I hope Maria enjoys making them. Hopefully you'll have a great day. Bye. Happy hunting.